Hey guys, welcome back to One Candle Paranormal Case Files. We're here with your host, Vic Waitley. And Marcus D. We've got a great episode for you guys today because this story comes to you from our home state of Indiana. Before we get into this video, guys, we want to remind you that you can show your support to the channel by checking out our Patreon and becoming a patron today. We've got some great gifts on there, including autographs from Vic and I, as well as the chance to suggest video ideas for the channel. But keep listening, guys, as we take a look at the legend of the oil pit squid. On November 15, 1996, the workers of the GM subsidiary Delphi Interior and Lighting made a startling discovery. While cleaning out a sludge pit of toxic chemicals in Plant 9, the workers discovered there were these creatures moving around inside of the sludge pits. They were about 6 to 8 inches long, reddish gray in color. They had these squid-like appearance with multiple tentacles. Eyewitnesses to the account say that one of the creatures was killed and placed in a jar, only to be stolen a few days later before it could be sent off for inspection. The rest of the pit later was cleaned out. Delphi's official position on the matter was that it was just bacterial growth from a fresh water source leaking into the chemicals from a broken sprinkler and it was all just harmless. The company would have several inspections from the EPA within the months following the incident, although the company would continue to deny any creature ever actually existed and that the company had properly disposed of all of the chemicals involved. Years later, following the incident, Plant 9 would come to have a fence actually built around it with a private security force guarding it keeping people out. Former employees actually reported no one was allowed inside the building including the plant manager, which leads us to ask why. All right, guys, so I guess the first thing that we need to address with the oil pit squid is, is Delphi's position that it's just bacterial growth? Is that an even a plausible story? Well, and I'm far from an expert on bacteria, but I've grown a few bacterial colonies in my day, and... I'm not sure. Could it be possible for it to grow there? Yeah, but is it going to look like that? No. The things you need for bacterial growth are time, warmth, and moisture. And that'll just get a bacteria colony started. But the thing is, the largest bacteria that there is is just barely visible with the human eye. And a bacterial colony is not going to look like some sort of moving, swimming, squid-like or organism. Now, yeah, some bacteria, they have phalange and things like that and it kind of can look like tentacles but for it to be this big would be truly unique within itself yeah i had two things coming from that explanation for me one i have failed several biology class experiments and no monstrosity of a creation that i ever had looked like it even came close to anything flopping around with tentacles on it and two why are you growing bacterial colonies Hey, I have my own reasons. Yeah, I'm sure you do. My my other thought is, the stuff that was in that pit, there was, like, s different plastics, and there was antifreeze. These don't seem like the sort of things conducive for lots of cellular growth. There's not a lot of organic material for them to feed on. It, it probably wouldn't even host a bacterial colony. It should probably be too toxic for a bacterial colony. And even if it was, like, some sort of another animal... What kind of animal could swim around in antifreeze and just poison? What animal goes, you know what I'm going to look for? I'm going to look for a toxic sludge pit and just swim around in it. This thing defies standard yeah, size. Yeah, it's like Creature from the Black Lagoon weird. It, the Black Lagoon was filled with poison. <laughs> My only thought of it being a bacteria would be that a bacteria got into here. It was exposed to lots of carcinogens causing mutations. The mutations were survived, caused something called evolution in a bottleneck. And you can get adaptations in a species incredibly quickly by using this. And it just created this bizarre, unique life form. And the weird thing is, whenever you read articles about the oil pit squid, it was always given this singular entity description. Let's go back to the original story, folks. There were multiples of these things swimming around in it. And in the original story, one's put in a jar and kept, and the others, there's no account of what happened to them. They're probably still in there. Yeah, like, there's just, there's nothing else to them. Well, no, they cleaned it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, supposedly. 
But it, well, didn't they build, like, not one but two fences around yeah, it? Yeah, they built a giant fence around it, and now nobody knows anymore. And a second fence around it? Yeah, too? and with a private security force that keeps everybody out, including the plant manager. And I would think, GM, would they naturally have their own security force? Why bring in this private firm? If I had to make a guess why, probably liability. Because if you think about it, you're dealing with people. You got to keep people. I mean, this was a huge story when it came out. I mean, you got to keep people from trying to get into this plant to look around and what's going on. I mean, this was a big to do in the town. I mean, don't forget where we're talking about where this is at. Okay, this is Anderson. Okay, at that plant, one in three adults in Anderson was employed by this plant. So this was probably a big to do, not only in, in Anderson itself, but the surrounding area around that. It also kind of sounds like if GM needed to, they probably could have hushed it up. Yeah, because don't forget, a Anderson's right by Indianapolis too, so you pull everybody with, you know, from there wanting to snoop around. People are stupid, you gotta build a fence, guards. Yeah, but I still think it could have been, if it's something normal, just needing to keep people out, I really feel like it could have been covered by GM Security Force. But I have talked to a former employee that was there, and the one detail that he told me that he thought was weird was that the plant manager himself was not allowed in there. So this was coming from top down. That is really odd. Like, really, really weird right there. Okay, but something that we're neglecting to think about, the fate of the specimen. What's your thoughts? Again, I go back to the original story again. There was one that was put in a jar, it disappears, but there's several others swimming around. I don't know, something to me doesn't fit right. Now, when I talked to a former employee of there, most of the employees there heard the rumor that it was actually sent off to like Purdue or some sort of university to be inspected. And I could believe that, or it was sent somewhere to be inspected. I mean, Purdue would be a natural place to send it. And don't forget, while this was going down, following this event, this plant was inspected by the EPA. It already had scheduled appointments and there were complaints made that they weren't disposing of the waste properly, so they were coming back. And the EPA commented on this saying that they had never seen anything like this creature that they were describing from the oil pit squid. What, what about the thought that maybe, maybe it was never sent anywhere. Maybe they knew this inspection was coming. They're just trying to get the plant ready and they just made the whole thing disappear. And it could be, I mean, again, if this plant shut down, again, one in three adults was employed by this plant. They probably couldn't afford it to be shut down. I mean, and this is a little theory. It may not have even been GM that was trying to do this because shortly thereafter, they were trying to, I mean, they were trying to close the plant anyway. So it may not have even been GM. It may have just been the people of the area wanting to keep a little close on this to keep the plant open as long as they could. I could, I could understand people wanting to keep something like this hush. But uh, another weird connection. There are a lot of connections between like the Ohio Valley and this part of the Midwest and weird tentacle things like uh, octopi have been found dead at the falls of the Ohio here in the Midwest and no one knows where they come from. They look like they're, if I remember right, Atlantic octopi just found dead battered at the bottom of the falls and no clue where they came from. There's been accounts of people seeing octopi people in this portion of the Midwest. And I don't even know what to say about that. This is a freshwater area. Octopi shouldn't live here, let alone octopi people. Well, a lot of the Ohio River, there's a lot of plants along the Ohio River dumping sludge in. I mean, you're not going to go down and drink right from the Ohio. There's a reason for that. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's a connection to all these toxic chemicals in this. I mean, I'm stretching for this. I am. But maybe there could be. Like maybe it's causing some sort of animal to, to adapt into something octopus-like and it's being misidentified? Could be. I don't know. And also, this story is just very, very, very strange. I first picked up this story out of Indiana Monsters, which is a really neat little book if you ever can find a copy of it, but it's kind of hard to find. And it was one of the stories that stood out the most of all the stories from Indiana. The weirdest part about this to me is this particular story is almost like a reverse of the norm of paranormal encounters. In most paranormal encounters, you have the layperson encountering something bizarre, enter government agent, there's a cover up. In this particular story, you have people finding it, but it's gone before the government employees show up. Yeah, it's it ends up starting a weird sort of chord, but the, the chord it strikes, it also seems very believable. This really seems like one of those stories that I think could definitely be true. 
Although a lot of the science I don't have a good answer for, but it just has the hallmarks of a true story, not like a fictional made up story. Okay, Marcus, what are your thoughts on this one? I'm stuck on the importance of this plant to the area. I've said it before in the video, several adults relied on this plant for their income. They probably could not afford the plant being shut down. So by the time that the EPA is showing up and nobody's finding anything, to me, that, that spells cover up. And I think, I think it's quite possible some people in the upper management made this stuff disappear. I mean, you'd have to. I mean, you'd almost have to. You know, you have a responsibility to the people of the town. You have a responsibility to your family to feed it. You can't afford this place to shut down. For me, I think there could be something to it. That this mass of chemicals sparked off some sort of chain reaction and perhaps some biological life forms that are in there. They created something that could survive the whole life finds a way scenario thing going on. And whatever was in there started to grow, started to reproduce, and started to become a colony. Some people stumbled upon this, pulled one out, sent it away. Either maybe it was sent to Purdue and the people there hushed it up, or maybe the town hushed it up. But everything here, everything has the hallmarks of something that could have really have happened. The only thing I'm stuck on, the science is a little difficult to explain on it, but we're dealing with chemicals mixing and sustaining for a long period of time, derelict of any sort of observation. Something odd could have easily happened. And we haven't even touched on the possibility, maybe this was being used for some sort of experiment. But we'll let you hash that out in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out our latest video on the oil pit squid. We really wanted to do this video, not just because it comes from our home state, but because this one, we didn't really think a lot of people knew about it. We love to bring you guys the paranormal content that you guys might not be familiar with. That's just what we love to do here at One Candle Society. If you guys really like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because it really helps out the channel when you guys do that. And don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you guys can stay up to date on all the new content coming out of One Candle Society. And as I said in the beginning of the episode, guys, if you really like our content, consider becoming a patron today because it really helps us when you do that and it really helps us bring you guys better content. But as always, keep believing because we'll keep listening.